Hi, I'm Morton Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello, and welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. Today, we're back for a video about a signing, which I didn't think we'd do this summer given the rate it was going at, but we finally got one Callum Britton from Barnsley. And who else better to tell me about Callum Britton than Josh from the Red All Over uh, YouTube channel? So, Josh, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm better now we've made a sign and we've been, I think we were the only <laughs> club in the championship not to have one. So it, it's been nice. Do you want to just introduce, you know, yourself and the Red All Over page? Obviously, we've had Andy Simcox on before, who's everyone asked for him back. And <laughs> I was hoping Barnsley had stayed just from Andy, really, this year. But, you know, if you just want to introduce yourself and the Red All yeah, Over I channel. Mean I'll try. I'll try and live up to Andy's name and his reputation that he's got. But that's some that that's some big shoes to fill. That I think he's in France at the moment. He's been away for a. I think he's been away for a month. So uh, he's had a nice preseason himself. But yeah, uh, I'm for the Red All Over Channel. Um, then we just cover Barnsley, S similar to what you do with Blackburn. We've produced the same content, but it's for Barnsley. Yeah, I'm, you know, I watch the channel quite regularly. I like the EFL content. I think you're a really good page, and I've said to Andy many times and Joe. You know, we spoke about it, but we'll dive straight in. So, Callum Britton, mm -hmm. obviously, it's rumoured to be seven figures in the end of it. Just to start off, what were your thoughts when it came out? Because it's kind of come out of blue, hasn't it? It's been yesterday yeah. was linked and today he's now a Rovers player. Yeah, it was a weird one because I think I saw at the start the start of the window that you were linked to him and it sort of went really quiet for like a month or so. And at that point, I'd um, especially with Michael Duff coming and playing five at the back, um, underneath Valeri, when we did play a five at the back, Britain was probably one of his better players. Um, and obviously, it, it went it, it went quiet for three, four weeks. And um, in pre-season, been playing every game. So I think we got every intention for him to be with us at the start of the season. Um, but obviously, it seemed to progress quite quite quickly from when, of, when it was announced to him becoming a Rovers player. Yeah, it was a strange one because, I mean, Rovers have got a habit, especially this window of, we'll link with a player for three weeks and then he just goes off to Middlesbrough and goes to Sheffield United. <laughs> it's been, you know, such a common thing. So it was strange to see it move on. What would you say his strengths are? Obviously, it's two years he spent with you, weren't it? After yeah. moving from here, what did you see over them two years that made him... Because you were obviously well, a regular in your team. He was, I think, uh, in his first season... Um, I think he, he, he hit the ground running and uh, I think most fans were really impressed with him. Um, really good work rate. The only downside, which especially in that back five, which we had on the Valerian, was the end product. Because I think especially as win backs, you've got to, you've got to, be able to do it on both ends. You've got to, be able to do it defensively and you've also got to, be able to produce something attackingly because the, the they're in place of your wingers and they need to be, they need to be delivering. And I think... Over his time, I think over two years, he's got four assists. He got three in his first year and then one last year, I think. Um, and he never scored for us. He had a glorious opportunity against Swans in playoff semis that it just fell to him. And I have no idea to this day how Freddie Woodman saved it. Um, and I think again last season, he, he, when we played Reading in like a relegation six-pointer, last kick at game, fell to him again, exactly the same place as that one against Swansea. And that might, he might have just missed that completely. So I think his end product's there, but the work rate's there. He's a hard worker. Um, uh, he gets he gets up and down that right that, that right hand side well. Um, defensively, he's pretty solid. He's pretty sound there. Um, but I think he definitely, it, it, it works a lot better in a five rather than a four because I think last season, Obviously, we had um, a little bit of chop and change with managers and this didn't really work out for us. But both of them played four, four, four at the back and it just didn't give him that sort of freedom to just bomb on and sort of have that like carefree attitude in a way of being like, right, I can go as far further forward and I've got, there'll be a midfield that sits in. I've got a right centre-back that can like fit fill in as well. So I think, I think he got more defensive responsibility, though kind of that adjustment, I don't think it ever really set, it, it, it never really got set, settled in that way. I think that's interesting because Rovers, obviously, we're under a new manager and we've kind of seen a back five and a back four this pre-season, but that's been more numbers because of numbers and, you know, how many we've got. And it looks like we're going to go a back five. So this signing kind of makes sense. We're not right wing yeah. back and, you know, it fits in. So you mentioned about his end products, obviously. I'm not sure if you know, but Rovers had Ryan Ambe at right back who famously, at least around the club, never scored in 200 appearances, <laughs> I think it was. So that was kind of always a bugbear of Rovers fans that he'd never scored. But, you know, maybe he'll get, you know, I said to him, might be a bit different. Is there anywhere else he can play other than, you know, right wing back? Um, we saw him move um, around the Valerian a lot. Um, 
it were it were really strange that he used to drop into cent- central midfield from time to time, even though it was it in that season with COVID. So you, could, you have five substitutes, and we'd never it were never like um, we we'd have an injury, so he'd just slot slot him in there. It'd be like six, sixty minute mark, you bring on a right a, a right back instead of bring on Jordan Williams, and then you push Brit- Britain into middle and bring a midfielder off. And it always seemed weird because we'd have two or three midfielders on bench that he could have chose from instead, but instead he went for Brit- Britain. I think it's probably down to um, his energy that is not it's not his necessarily position, but it just play on like the right the the, the right hand side of the free, which it's kind it's not too dissimilar from what he's doing anyway at right at right wing back. But he did slot slot into there from time to time, and it was it, it, it was strange see, seeing him in there, but he still he still did a job. He was he was all right in there, but it were never really properly u- utilized in that role. They just seemed to drop in there for half an hour, and then we just see see the game out in a way. Yeah, that sounds kind of like it'll suit us perfect. Our right back and left back have all been pushing in the midfield this uh, pre season. So hmm. it kind of sounds right. Obviously, we were always, it sounds like we went after him for quite a while. And so he's a man, he's a target of a previous manager, which I think a few people were concerned about slightly. But he's got the full back and the new manager. I hope he does well. So easy championship level because obviously last year, you know, we all know the season Barnes he had and we were obviously playing in a poor Barnsley side, so maybe we didn't see everything. You know, is he good enough to play a championship? Do you think he'd be good enough for us? Because obviously, our aim in a few years' time is going to be getting that top six. I think um, probably mid-table championship is where I'd push him. I don't think he'd necessarily slot into like a top six side. Um, it's just it's just that case for an end product because when you look at them sides are in around, in around the top the top six like the yeah. full, full backs and wing backs they've got that end product the the they're chipping in with nearly d- double figures assists or the the ch- chucking five goals in as well a season. So I think I think if he if, if he got that end product he he, he could be probably a leading championship right back but at the minute I think given the season he had last year because he wasn't he will he was kind of one of the players that you he could have down tools maybe with eight eight games left when we got a bit of a chance still to to go and do it and then obviously that loss at Reading kind of it knocked the stuffing out of him but I think from, from that point he kind of down tools and we never really saw him back 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 towards anything more and I think throughout that season in that back four he never really looked like the player he was in that first season that we signed him and Definitely in that first season, he looks like an established championship player, even though he took the step up, obviously, from MK Dons and he, he'd step, he stepped up a league. He'd, he slot, he, he slotted in seamlessly, whereas last season, he, he, he seemed all, all out of sorts. And kind, it, kind of like his confidence had been knocked and he'd gone, um, it kind of regressed in a way. So I think I think a fresh start is probably best for him, to be honest. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Obviously, like I mentioned before, seven figures it could rise to, which is quite a lot of money. In the current situation, that's quite a lot for us to spend. You know, I think we've only spent that on two players, three players since promotion back to uh, back to the championship. Just some final thoughts on Britain. So, you know, do you know what he's like around the team in terms of as a person, like as a member of the squad? Is he a leader? Because obviously, we've lost a lot of a lot of leading players. I know he's only twenty four, mm. but he's probably up there in the older players in our squad this year. It's that much of a young squad you know is he a leading player or would it be more that second group of players that are kind of guided by the older ones I think he kind of went through like a growth to be honest at Barnes because um, like in his first season I think he was still finding his feet um, and probably like trying to integrate himself into the dressing room himself but then um, in the second season um, I think it was a Marcus Shopper in charge um, just just right towards the end of Marcus Shop leaving he came and sort of called out the manager um, and saying like we don't we don't practice um, any attacking like phase of play or any um, sort of like drawn up get game plans or things like that and that will kind of I don't know how to say that in a way of like is it showing his character of been like look with is is gone against the manager and he's showing himself have been like right instead of that we're going to rally around ourselves and sort of forget whatever he's saying and just play how we want to play or is it kind of like that bad apple kind of status in that he's come out and said and said that and he's up is upset like the rest of the team or the manager because I don't think it had much bearing because I think Shop might have gone either the game or two games after so I don't think it necessarily had that that much of a bearing I think it's probably come out since then that he was probably bang on. You could tell that we weren't doing necessarily anything attackingly. When you looked at where we were in the league, it was quite obvious that something wasn't right at some point. Which it, I don't, I don't know if necessarily as a 
as like a leader kind of thing to come out and say because yeah. it's kind of like going against the grain of the manager. It's not really showing much unity. But I think at the start of this preseason, I think he would captained two games for us. So I feel like Michael Duff had seen him as someone that he want, he definitely wanted to keep um, and not necessarily build a side round, but he got the confidence in him to give him the armband. I know given it's only preseason, but it's still he still got to pick someone and that's who he picked. So I think he probably has developed that leadership qualities throughout that time. Um, and he does... He seemed quite vocal um, because uh, the way in which I sit at the games, like I sit, obviously, what one half he'll be in front in in front of me playing, and he could he, he was always talking to either the winger in front in front of him or like trying to organise the defence. Because again, last season we're the same as you with such a young side. Um, I think Callum Britton were one of the older ones and probably one of the most experienced ones as well. So he kind of had to take shot shoulder that responsibility of organizing the defense or organizing like the right the, the, the right inside himself so i think he probably he, he definitely has probably the capability to develop them leader skills um and he could become that kind of player if needed that's perfect and just a word on barnsley to finish us off obviously i mentioned dandy's been on before how much <laughs> want to keep you in you know what's the hopes for the season do you think you'll go up i think michael duff's a really good manager for a league think- one team especially yeah, I think um, I think it depends because the way in which we've, I think the board came out early doors because we've had the big changes behind the scenes of Paul Conway no longer been involved in Chen Lee. Um, and I think we're still sort of trying to find his feet following on from Paul Conway's legacy, which he's left behind um, of just cer- certain players who've come in who just, they just don't fit the mould, they don't fit the recruitment model or the team or the style. So I think it's going to be, it's probably going to be like a transition season for us this year. Um, and the board have come out saying that we need to cover seven or eight million pounds worth of losses from relegation. Which, to be honest, I think Callum Britton with a fee which I've seen of seven figures, I'd probably take it to be honest, just to cover that loss. Because I think, especially in that league, there's probably someone that maybe not probably on on his level or just a le- just a little bit below or in around his ability that we could probably sign for a little bit less and maybe on less wages. So there's I can see I can see the rationale behind the signing. Um, well, get get game room, but I still think it's too much of a transition season for us this year. So I'd say mid table with an outside chance of the playoffs. But I think when you look at the the signings, what some teams have made of Derby have signed a few championship quality players. They've yeah. got Connery and D- Dave McGoldrick. Um, and then I think Chef Wednesday signed Will Volks as well. And I think Ipswich will probably come and sign some championship quality as well, which I think it's probably getting a tougher league to come out of. And you've always got them teams which are up there when they get relegated, like your Pete, your Pete, Pete, Peter Bruce, Oxford have been up there last few years. So I don't think it's going to be easy. I think it's probably going to be like a transition year for us this year. So mid-table with an outside chance of playoffs, but it massively depends on what we're doing the rest of the chance of window. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's a really tough league, league one now, isn't it? I think when we got out of it, we kind of got lucky. We're a bit of, not lucky, but, the, you know, there were certain teams you knew would be up there. Now there's 12 or 13. I mean, even the teams that come up fancy themselves, don't yeah. they, to, you know, to get up. But thank you very much for joining us. You know, it's been a good chat about Britain. We could be back soon based on some of the rumours that have been uh, discussed <laughs> today, but we won't mention that. But no, thank you for joining us. And anyone who's no watching... You know, just check in the description. There'll be a link to Red All Over. You'll have seen them up before. You'll have seen them on our video from the Barnsley game at home just after Christmas. Just check them out. Good EFL content. But thanks again, Josh, and we'll uh, we'll see you again for a new video. Soon.